Hello, Instagram and Facebook. Woohoo! We're going live tonight to cook uh, my good lamb, veggies, and couscous recipe, which is on for tonight's dinner if you're part of the weekly menu planning service. Now, I've got my shit together tonight. Hey, Claire, how are you? And I've got technology sorted, so we're starting right on time, which is good. Um, I'm going to send you a photo of my setup. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna post it after we're finished because I'm basically MacGyver. <laughs> I've got two phones going. One's on Insta, one's on Facebook, uh, and they're basically sticky taped together. It's amazing. Hey Nick, how are you? <laughs> uh, classic. So I'll definitely post a photo of um, my setup because it's unreal. Like don't need to go out to JB Hi-Fi to get tripods, to get anything. You just need some rubber bands, some cardboard and some sticky tape. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so on the menu tonight is the grilled lamb with veggies and couscous. Now again, this is a really quick, easy meal. Um, we often have it on a weeknight because it takes probably 15 minutes from start to finish. So I'll run you through that. I'm gonna multitask again um, and talk you through it. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than 15 minutes, but um, otherwise it's super, super quick and super easy and a really nice balanced meal. So there's a few people on now, so let's get started. Um, I've got everything laid out here. I'll just show you, um, which took me two seconds. Okay, so I've got veggies ready, meat ready. Um, I've even got a compost bin to put the veggie scraps in. Uh, so we're good to go. And I've just washed my hands as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, prep the meat. Now I use lamb backstrap because it's nice and lean, but you can use any cut of red meat really. It doesn't matter so much. Um, I've just got this fresh from the butcher today. Um, so hot tip when you're cutting up meat is to put, put it on a separate chopping board. So try and keep a separate chopping board for meat in your kitchen rather than having everything on the one. Um, so mine in, in our house is red and everyone knows that that's the meat chopping board. So um, we're making a double batch tonight as well. And that's because as part of the weekly menu planning service, um, where all your dinners are planned for the week, there's always leftovers for at least one night. And that's to save you in the kitchen. Like I don't believe that healthy eating should be really hard and I don't think that you should be slaving away in the kitchen for hours and hours to get dinner prep. So I'm gonna cook a double batch tonight and then we've got the night off tomorrow. So I'm not going live tomorrow night, guys, sorry. <laughs> We're actually gonna go live at 10 a.m. So you can have a coffee with me at 10 a.m. tomorrow. All right, so we'll get the meat. Open up the pack that it's in. Okay, I'm gonna ceremoniously dump it on this plate. So it's a double back strap, we've got 600 grams there. Okay, and all I'm gonna do is rub a little bit of olive oil in it. Tiny bit, and then I've just got some like fancy Moroccan seasoning. <laughs> Not very fancy. Um, just a Master Foods one. And it doesn't need a lot. Or you could make your own blend as well, like or put a dukkha through it or something. Hello, Leslie. <laughs> uh, Leslie, you're hilarious. All right, so a little bit on there, rub it in. And then flip it over and do the other side. Now, if you've got time, it's good to let uh, red meat kind of come to room temperature a little bit before you cook it. So I got this out of the fridge at 4.30 um, and it's pretty, like I'm in Brisbane and it's nice and warm here still. So it is actually like close-ish to room temperature. All right, so that's it. Not very heavily spiced. I don't like too much sodium. Leslie, are you still working and you're on this live as well? <laughs> uh, looks like you are. Hilarious, okay. Okay, so that's the meat done, like that's it. Lamb backstrap's great, it's super lean, you don't have to trim it. There's two backstraps there. Um, and then there's a little bit of olive oil on it, but that's it. <laughs> Leslie, <laughs> stop ticking off tasks, it's coming up as notifications for me. 
All right, so meat, meat done. And so we get rid of get rid of that. I didn't really use it, but it, just in case any meat juice is kind of good on my normal chopping board. All right, so that's done. Now to prep the veggies, this takes no time. Hey guys, hello everyone on Insta. All right, so to prep the veggies, I'm gonna do the eggplant first. Now we're doing a double batch, so I've got quite a big one here. Um, all you need to do is trim the end a little bit. So hot tip when you're trimming eggplant, leave this bit because you need something to hold on to. So leave that there so that um, you can chop right to the end and make use of all of your vegetable. So I don't see any point in throwing out that end bit. So I'm gonna, <laughs> thanks Leslie. <laughs> I'm gonna use that still. So like there's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why you would throw it out. So we'll put it on the tray and then we're just gonna cut um, big discs, kind of like mm, thumb thickness. It's probably a centimeter and a half or about an inch ish if you're in the Northern hemisphere. Um, and you just want to try and cut them evenly so that they cook evenly. Obviously need to sharpen my knives. Okay, so see we've got this last little bit left and I'm gonna chop that off without cutting my fingers and then you have basically used all of the eggplant. All right, so that, that's the eggplant done. That bit goes in the compost. Now, capsicum. There's a few ways to skin a cat with a capsicum. Now, it really depends on how you like to do it and what you're using it for. So the chef's way of doing it is actually cutting around the middle section and then the seed should, should um, be retained in there. Now, the skinnier the capsicum, like the more um, long and thin it is, the easier it is to do that. The shorter, fatter ones, um, they've got a bigger sort of seed stem through here. Um, and often more seeds in there. So if you want a, um, an easy cutting capsicum, get a really uh, long sort of skinny one. So you'll see this one, I'll chop it open. There's, there's not too much going on in there, which is good. So we're gonna chop it like that around that mid, middle seed um, section. And then there shouldn't be too much seed for us to scrape out. All right, that's how, you, that's how you skin a capsicum. <laughs> so we've got that middle section all ready to go. Um, bang out the seeds. And there's our segments ready to grill. Okay, so nice and flat too. That's the other um, positive of getting a long skinny capsicum is that it is nice and flat um, and easy to grill. So that can, that's ready. So I'm gonna do another one as well, just like that. So around the seed. Done. So there's a couple of little bits in here that I'll pull out. Otherwise, yep, that, that's good to go. Same with these ones. And that one's good. Okay, capsicum done. Takes about 30 seconds. Okay, now zucchinis. So again, um, I wanna try and cut them evenly so they cook evenly um, and maximize the surface area so that makes them cook faster. Hello Beck, are you on the bus on the way home or are you working from home Beck? Actually you probably you probably wouldn't be on the bus. Why would you be on a bus right now? All right so these guys I'm going to top and tail them. 
and you know maximizing the amount of veggies you've got so that's the tiniest little top and tail um, ever straight into the compost bin home working from home that's good all right now we're going to cut them lengthways and as evenly as possible so that they again cook evenly so zucchinis actually have a nice little line along them that you can follow uh, to help you cut them straight so they look like that yeah all right they're ready to go lay them out like that that will make my job easier later and then we'll repeat that with a couple more so the, the, the good thing about the menu planning is that I've given you the shopping list so like specifically on your shopping list you know exactly how many zucchinis to buy you know exactly how many capsicum to buy so that when you get to the recipe you have everything that you need and you don't have to run to the shops um, or grab something that you might have forgotten um, and the good thing about it too is that you shop once okay like especially in the current climate we don't want to be running to the shops all the time because you've forgotten something so it's all planned out for you so that you've got your meals for the entire week um, and yeah you're shopping once so you're not spending too much time out and about all right so they're done as well so basically Got to go to a job. Hopefully catch these videos again. So good. Thanks, Nick. Don't work too hard. And stay safe out there. Nick's on the front line. Oh. All right. I always drop things in my kitchen. Give it a wash. It's all good. Okay, so now we've got our veggies ready. Da-da-da-da. And the meat's good to go as well. So all I'm going to do is um, drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil and um, that's it. I'm gonna grill them all up. Okay, so we're gonna go, I'm gonna try and carry everything outside in one go. Let's see how we go. So we're heading out to the barbecue. Uh, bring my MacGyver tripods. Yes, so good. So good. All right, here we go. BBQ. So turn this guy on. Okay, my, that barbecue will take like two seconds to heat up. So while we're doing that, I'm going to um, bring you back and we're going to boil the kettle to get some couscous going. <laughs> uh, you get a tour. Get a tour. Alrighty. Hilarious. Welcome to the butler's pantry. So I'm going to turn the kettle on. Boil that up. All right, that'll take two seconds. Come on back, getting dizzy. So while that is boiling and the barbecue's heating, all I'm going to do now is get some couscous in this pot. So we're making a double batch. So I'm gonna do a cup of couscous. Now couscous is the easiest, hello Joe. Couscous is the easiest carb to make like in the world, other than like sliced and piece of bread. I'll show you how easy it is. Okay, so it's 5.15, let's time how long this takes. Okay, one cup of couscous. In there. Now I've got a stock cube as well. We've got some beef stock, uh, but you can throw in whatever you like. Doesn't really matter. Now the trick with couscous is you don't put the stock in the couscous. Okay, you put the stock in the water. So once that's boiled, we're gonna throw the stock cube into that, into, we can use this or I might actually get a different jar. 
So we've got one cup of couscous, we want one cup of water. So last night we did brown rice and the ratio is one cup of rice um, and two cups of water. <laughs> um, whereas couscous is one is to one. Okay, so stock cube goes in there. Ready for a cup of boiling water. Now, then we want that to dissolve in the water and then you pour that stock flavored water into the couscous and you don't have to worry about trying to break up a stock cube in the couscous. Okay, so the kettle's almost finished, but the barbecue is gonna be heated up right now. So I'm gonna take you back out there and we'll throw that stuff on the barbecue. Yeehaw. So you can do this if you have like a big grill plate at home or an oven or something. Um, this is totally the easiest. Can you see? Here we go. All right, so meat doesn't go on yet. Now I'm gonna use my fingers and just basically throw everything on. So it's already starting to sizzle, so it's already it's already ready. Let's bark a clock. That's Coda in the background. Done. <laughs> That's it. Now I'm going to shut the lid. And we're basically going to walk away from that for five minutes, ten minutes. All right. So let's go make our couscous. So I'll get my kettle. <laughs> Hopefully my Mogava sticky tape holds. You're back. You're back with me and you're stable. Okay, so a cup of water, boiling water. We need a new kettle, my kettle leaks. Spoon. All right, can you guys see that? Here we go, cup of water. Hey Gabby, welcome. Okay, so yeah, trick is um, dilute, not dilute, dissolve the stock in the water. And then, you ready? This is how easy it is to make couscous. So we've got the couscous in here, cup of stock in here, one is to one's the ratio. <laughs> Pour it in, give it a little swish around so that it's mixed, and then cover it. And then done. It'll be ready in a few minutes. All right, so now's your opportunity to clean up. So we've got the veggies on the plate. The couscous is done and ready. Um, you can grab some plates. We've also got some um, hummus here to go with dinner. So this is, oh, this is my favorite hummus. If I haven't made it, then this is what we eat. Um, Yumi brand, it's delicious. And you can buy this massive big tub in Woolies for like $7 or something. So it's really cost effective. And you'll see that there's, there's, there's not much left. <laughs> so that's ready as well. Got a couple of plates here. So we might actually take everything outside because it's beautiful out there. Um, and we'll be ready to plate up in a second. So we'll take some plates. We'll take the hummus. We'll take a fork for the couscous and then we're basically good. And um, the other thing I might take out there, we might need to do two trips, is a knife so that we can cut up our veggies once they're done. All right, so come with me. Hopefully I'm not making everyone sick. Alrighty. Yeehaw. All right, let's check on the veggies while you're here. Look 
looking good. So definitely not done yet. We want to obviously get them to not be nice and browned um, and soft. So if you've, if you've got a barbecue like that, you want to keep the lid down um, because the temperature drops, drops as soon as you take the lid up and then it cranks back up again. So let's go grab the chopping board and the knife and then I'll sit still and stop making you sick. All right, let's do this. Okay. I've got a big chopping board. How's everyone going? Who have we got on here? We've got heaps of people. Hello. For those of you that have just joined us, we're cooking grilled veggies with lamb and couscous. Super quick and easy. How you going, Gabs? Are you sitting drinking wine in your garden again? Doing gardening? <laughs> uh, funny. Hey, try Fred. How you going? All right, so does anyone have any questions for me while you're all on their live, while we're waiting for our veggies to cook? <laughs> Cab says she's almost drop, dropped her wine on the way home. That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, what are you doing out and about, Gabs? You're meant to be at home, self-isolating. Or are you working today? Ah, working today. See, I read your mind. <laughs> How's work going, Gabs? Is it all good? Not too crazy, not too many foot festations. Somebody asked me today where they get dietitian approved aprons from, and I've only got two. So if you want one, <laughs> let me know and I can do, in a, do a special order if people actually want them. Um, all right, so I reckon those veggies would be close to done on one side. So we might give them a quick check and have a look at them um, and then give them a flip because yeah, it won't be too long and they'll be ready. Um, and quick couscous check, that's done. Like so, it fluffs up by itself if you get that ratio of water up, right? Um, and then all you need to do now is get a fork at it um, and give it a fluff. So it's perfectly done. And because we put that stock cube in the water, you don't need to like be trying to stir through chunks of um, stock or anything like that. So that's good and ready to go when everything else is ready. All right, yeah, and so this is, this is what's on dinner for dinner tonight. We've got leftovers tomorrow night of the same thing. And then there's a surprise, a surprise dinner. Well, not really surprise, but um, dinner by the time we get to Thursday and Friday is a little bit differently. So I think, yeah, leftovers one night a week is definitely key. Um, I don't feel like we should be slaving away for hours in the kitchen cooking something differently every night, especially when we start the weekly menu planning. I kind of ease you in as well. So there's leftovers probably two nights a week so that you're not having to cook something different every single night. Um, I, that's like just too complicated. You, I don't want to throw seven new recipes at you. So I've probably thrown like maybe four or five recipes at you. Um, otherwise it's just like too much brain power. Um, you need too many things. So I kind of ease you in and as the weekly menus evolve, um, we increase your recipes and your, um, like basically your repertoire in the kitchen. So definitely starting off in week one with super quick and super easy type recipes. 
Um, and the other thing, I guess, is that they are planned by a dietitian. So there's a good variety of meats. We had prawns last night for dinner. We've got lamb tonight. We've got chicken later on the week. We've even got a tofu stir fry later on too, so that you do have a good balance of meats. Hey, Fee. Um, and the other thing is I plan them so that the week starts with the fresh stuff. So we've got like nice fresh lamb backstrap here. We've got, we had fresh prawns last night. And then as the week goes, this is the custom HelloFresh. <laughs> um, we did seafood last night, Gabs, and then we did prawns, remember? Um, Gabs, is, Gabs has said this is the custom HelloFresh. It basically is, like I've seen that today. It's kind of like HelloFresh, but it's actually planned by a dietitian and the meals are really balanced. So if some of the meals that I've, I have looked at with HelloFresh are really carb heavy, um, or they don't have any carbs, whereas this has got a good balance of protein, a good balance of carbohydrate, and then plenty of salad and veggies, which is definitely like dietitian tick. But also at the moment, we wanna be focusing on getting lots of fresh stuff in. So we've got lots of vitamins and minerals, lots of gut loving fiber, cause that's what's gonna help support our immune system the most. So um, before the custom HelloFresh, hey Beck. Before the custom Hello Fresh comment, Gabs, <laughs> um, what I was saying is that the start of the week, because we're only shopping once a week, the start of the week we're having like more fresh stuff, and then the back end of the week we're utilizing things like mince and chicken breast that can potentially go in the freezer, um, and it doesn't matter so much if it's fresh or not, um, and that helps you just to shop once a week as well. So I'm just gonna check on these veggies. If anybody has any comments or banter, throw it at me now. We're gonna give these veggies a quick turn. Yes, yeah, so they're definitely, definitely cranking now. Turn that down a bit. It's definitely cooking. All right. So that won't take too long to do now. So some of those that are really cooked, um, what I might do is just make a bit of room for the meat and then it'll all be finished at the same time. Not you guys, the doggos. <laughs> Alright, so turn that down a little bit. And then the meat can go on. So it's even more at room temperature now, which is delicious. Alright. There we go, I'll pop that lid down and that'll all be done in a sec. What are you having for dinner tonight, Gabs? Hit me up. And what recipes do you want to see, Gabby, actually, while we're at it? Anyone, there's all these people on here and you're all silent. Someone talk to me. Come on, I'm in social isolation here. Hello, Abby Freer, where are you from? Hey Beck, have you got your dinner sort of prepped and ready if you're watching along? Beck's having this for dinner tonight. She's part of our weekly menu planning service. You might have seen her um, green prawn curry creation last night that I reshared. And it, like first time, well not first time, but Beck's on a prawn eater and she manned up and bought prawns. So I'm super proud of you, Beck. <laughs> All right, Gabs, are you still there or did you drop your wine? You need an in-house chef. So many people have asked me for that. So my aunt, my common response is that you guys can't afford me. <laughs> my hourly rate is too high um, 
for me to be delivering and cooking food for you every night. So that is why I developed the weekly menu planning service. So I've basically done all the work for you. I've like mapped out your dinners. I've given you all the recipes. They're all dietitian approved. They're balanced. They have each recipe has a nutritional breakdown for you. And then I've given you the shopping list. I'm actually I'll go grab what the what this week looks like to show you. So this is my way of helping as many people as I can without having you guys pay for me to cook you dinner because <laughs> you you definitely can't afford me. So I'm just, I'll go grab the menu plan. We can have a look at it together. So Beck said nope. Just got home from work. All right, Beck, get your stuff together and we could eat together. This is how quick it goes. Two seconds. Alright, did you guys survive? This is our weekly menu plan. So it's all written all over now, but this is what it looks like. This is the template. So we've got all of your meals, your main meals down here for the week, and then the shopping list over here. And the shopping list is divided into sections to make your shop easier. Okay, right? So we've got like the aisle section here. We've got fruit and veggies, butcher, meat, seafood, other, if there's any other things that you need. And then deli fridge and deli fridge and freezer. Okay, so um, you can see like this is the plan. I've crossed out the things that we've already got, so I'm not going to get them. They're on the pantry staples list. And then handwritten below is all the other stuff that we need for breakfast and um, a few things for lunches, and then just any other household items that we need. So everything is there. And you'll see that it's like manky and folded because it's been to the shops with us and now it's pinned up on our pin-up board in the kitchen. So it's literally your one-stop shop for food for the week. And there's even room in your meals you, down here if you want to write what you're having for lunches, if you want to write what you're having for breakfast. So you really just have one plan. So Beck says, kitchen is in use by sister-in-law. Damn it. <laughs> now I need to wait my turn. Oh, I should have got home like five minutes earlier, Beck. Um, classic. So yeah, I wanted to show you, this is week one. So if you jump in on the weekly menu um, plan anytime, you get week one and that's what we're going through this week. So it's a system designed to ease you in rather than just jump in wherever. So we're starting with really quick, easy meals and then transitioning you through all the dietitian approved recipes over the next few weeks or months. Um, and then here in Australia, we're going to head into winter. So there's going to be a winter edition as well. So by the time we get to sort of June, July, August, we're eating like nice, warm, comforting food, but still dietitian approved. So lots of salad and lots of veggies, excuse me, or warm things um, so that you're still ticking all the right boxes. You fire veggies every day, but it's like comfort food. <laughs> All right, so just going to check on the meat because that probably needs a flip. Delicious. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Gabby. <laughs> Could totally do this with tofu. All right, so see how these are ready now already? They're soft. So I'm just going to start bringing them out, putting them on my um, big chopping board here. Nice and soft and juicy. They're a little bit blacker than I would like because I'm trying to film and explain and cook at the same time. Yeah, so give, give eggplants a bit of a squish test and make sure that they're nice and soft. There's nothing worse than eggplant that's not quite cooked yet. Nice and squishy and juicy. Alright, it's pretty much all done. A 
I'll leave that alone for a couple more seconds. Now I'll show you what's going on down here. If I can. My little MacGyver set up. Here we go. All right. So, cook them in big rounds and then we want to chop them up into sort of more bite-sized pieces. So if you line everything up together, it makes it super easy. So zucchini. That's done. Um, eggplant I like to cut into quarters. So straight down the middle. And like it doesn't need to be super neat, right? Because we're gonna just chuck it all in together in a second. All right, and the same with the capsicum, kind of similar to the um, zucchini. We'll sort of chop it up roughly. Just like that. Done. Now I would rest um, the lamb in some foil and leave it, leave it for a bit and that'll help the, the flavors soak in. That's it guys, super easy, super simple. Got a couscous here. Let my fork go. Super nice and fluffy, so we want to plate that up first. And then basically mix all the veggies through. So you can do a big sort of um, tumble of them together, just on the board, like we're not fancy here. So that's four nights, I mean four serves, so you can sort of divide it up into quarters. That goes into our plate. Slice up the lamb for you. How are we going? My guy was set up, starting to fail. <laughs> All right. Now you can cook your lamb as like raw or raw or not as raw as you like it. Beach on top there. It's got a bit of a boy serve and a girl serve going on. And then the last thing we're going to do, come on phones, hold it together, is top it with mm -hmm, some hummus. And there you have it. 
Oh. <laughs> Grilled lamb with veggies and couscous. Done. And it took what? It took me 40 minutes because I'm a bit retarded um, trying to cook and talk, but literally takes about 15 minutes. So that's it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed watching. Um, any questions, please let me know. Um, and for those of you having this for dinner tonight, enjoy. All right, see you later.